So we are back after a short little vacation during the New Year's season, and we're going to be covering some stuff that's happening on the other side of the globe since it's been pretty quiet, obviously, here during the holidays. But uh, on the other side, both in Japan and in China, there's been a whole bunch of different kinds of Transformer news, reveals, releases. And the first thing I'm going to cover is something that we touched on very briefly during the uh, New Year's end of year live stream. And it was that of a Wonder Festival exclusive item that will be happening at Winter Wonder Festival 2024 in Japan. And it's that of a brand new item, a Sufobi item from Neo Player One. Now, Neo Player One every year gets a one day license from Takar Tomi to do a Transformer product, something very small and simple. And last year at Wonder Festival Summer 2023, they did a Sufobi of Beast Wars Optimal Optimus, a simple transform non-transformable Sufobi, you know, three points of articulation figurine, also known as Powered Kumboi uh, in Japan for Beast Wars. And it was a limited run, wasn't uh, very large, about four inches tall and pretty simple. But because it was a limited run and a special handmade item of limited nature, and of course had to pay for a licensing fee for one day, uh, <laughs> this thing was 25,000 yen, which was about $175 USD. And it was sold on a simple little baggie and hanger and stuff and was pretty cool. I'll be honest with you, pretty cool. I, w I would love to have one, but I wouldn't uh, near $200 want to have one, but still pretty cool. So apparently there was uh, some success with that and Neo Player One wants to use the mold a second time. So they're going to be doing a second release, this time the Beast Machines Primal Prime colors on that mold. So no doubt it'll probably also be in that 25,000 yen range. So if it's interest, if it's interesting to you, check that out if you're at Wonder Festival. Uh, if not, a lot of inventory that doesn't sell for Neo Player One from the, sh from the show actually ends up on their website afterwards. So check out Neo Player One's website after the show if you are interested and you're not going to get some sticker shock on the value. For those who are interested, when that date is, Wonder Festival Winter 2024 is going to be February 11th, 2024. Just the Sunday, uh, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Go check it out. Pretty awesome show. Would love to do a Wonder Festival. Uh, the next thing we're going to cover is something on the China side of things. Uh, this was something that showed up on Baidu, the Chinese message boards. And it was the first time we are ever seeing in-hand images of the unreleased Wave 4 Creo Warrior series. Now, Creo Warriors was this wave of Creo minifigs that Hasbro put out that wasn't available in the United States. It was only available in Canada and Asia. So China, Japan stuff and wave one and two came out and what they were, it's pretty much taking the classic G one movie characters or, you know, mostly movie characters really in their aesthetic and giving them different kinds of like historical figures. So there would be samurais, Wild West attire, pirate, gladiator, army, knight, ninja. They had a category called wise guy, which was like, you know, 1930s mobsters, I guess. <laughs> it's probably the best way. What are you, a wise guy? I guess that's what they're going for. That was the, the name for it. And these came out in 2015. And then after two waves of them, the line got canceled. But there was plans for more. Wave 3 showed up in 2016 on um, on different message boards. And I think it was also being sold on Baidu. Uh, some of the like early, I guess, samples of them. And so we got to kind of see what some of the others were that we would have gotten of different categories. And now, as of today, on uh, Baidu, now we have, hey, here's the rest of them. This is what Wave 4 would have been like. And it kind of completes... Some of the categories, because characters like Optimus and Starscream and Megatron pretty much wit Wave 3 and 4, now that we know what exists, it kind of covers every single category of the Wild West, Samurai, Gladiator. But we see some others. We get to see like, oh, they were going to do Jazz in this series. They were going to do Drift, and it is Drift. I mean, there was some debate, is that Grapple? Is it is it Hot Rod? It's Drift. It's, it's Drift how in R.I.D. 2015, he was an orange Samurai, and we got the orange Samurai here, so it's pretty clear. Um... But yeah, it's pretty cool that we get to see these for the first time. We can see a Gladiator Optimus, an Army Optimus, a Ninja Jazz, a Wise Guy Jazz, a Wise Guy 
uh, Megatron, which looks like a Molotov car- cocktail he's wielding. Uh, a Gladiator Megatron, which kind of works for him in a lot of ways. A Pirate uh, Bumblebee, a Ninja Bumblebee, Pirates versus Ninjas, I guess, going on there. <laughs> Wild West Starscream looks pretty cool. Samurai Starscream, and of course, a Samurai Drift. Very appropriate for the character. And of course, a uh, a um, an, a Knight Drift, too. So pretty cool we get to see these for the first time. And now that kind of adds to the list. I mean, not all characters were completed, but it does add to what is out there, whether it be Wave 1 and 2 publicly or the more sample prototypical form of stuff with Wave 3 and 4. Pretty cool. And the last thing we're going to cover is a post that went up on Twitter from Japan a couple days ago that led to a lot of confusion. And I said on the live stream I was going to do a better, you know, separate segment trying to explain what's going on here. There was a screenshot from the desk of a Toei mecha designer by the name of Tsuyoshi Nanoka. And it was just, a, a, you know, some screenshots of his stuff. And, you know, sharp people noticed in the background that he had a Super Ginrai, a.k.a. Power Master Optimus Prime from Generation 1, all in gold chrome on a pedestal. And people were going, oh, is this some lucky draw figure or something? No, it's not a lucky draw. It's um it's something that Takara was doing over the past couple of years and they kind of started it in 1987 and it was they would give out these little like trophies to employees of Takara or employees of Toei that they were doing a partnership with for the media uh just as thank yous or good work and everything like that and the first time we saw it was in 1987 like I said where they did for the 3rd anniversary of the Transformers brand they did a uh, like a Optimus Prime convoy all in gold on this little pedestal. And people are very familiar with that one because that one is if you have the Generations Guidebook, it's literally on, I think, the first or second page when you open it. So it's this nice item. And uh, those were given out to a bunch of employees. Oddly enough, over time, some of those trophies or statues, if you will, uh, would show up in the secondary market. And even one former Takara employee found his, which he kept in storage under his house crawl space, where it was completely destroyed by the weather. And uh, yeah, so, you know, they're out there. And then in 1988, they did the exact same thing. They did a chrome dome in silver, and they gave, gave it to the Takara employees, as well as also some of the Toei uh, animation employees. I think they didn't want to use Fortress Maximus because... That'd be a very big uh, chromed out statue uh, slash trophy. And then in 1989, they did this Super Ginrai in gold. And while it's not 100% clear uh, what it says on the pedestal, considering this is in the ownership of uh, Tsuyoshi Nanoka, uh, this pretty much says that, hey, it was probably like some of the past other ones. Hey, we're going to give you something as a thank you for working on, in this case, probably Master Force, Super God Master Force. And it's not the first time Nanoka-san has shown pictures of his personal space and collection and flexing on some of the special items he has, like Lucky Draws or chromed out figures and Sentai and Super Robots and everything. So it's par for the course. So that's kind of the origin of what that Super Jinrai is. And while we can't really make out what's on the pedestal, it's probably some kind of thank you for your mecha designs and everything for the Super God Master Force Transformers animation. But it's still pretty cool. Very, very cool. And that's it more or less. Just kind of wanted to cover these three separate segments today, and hopefully we'll get some more news and everything as the days progress. Obviously, Hasbro is on vacation. Takar is also taking it easy during these next couple of days. And I suggest you guys do the same too and just relax, much like I was the past couple of days. But I wanted to uh, put some stuff out for your enjoyment. Anyways, thank you for listening, everyone, and we'll talk to you again on the Transformer Slag podcast, and I'll talk to you in the near future.